the gospel. We are told by God of the Bible to prepare your hearts to know that there is salvation, there is hope, that hope lies in the Lord Jesus Christ alone without religion, without works. For God so loved the world. Love is of God, for God is love, the Bible proclaims to us. Greater love than, than a man lay down his life for his friends, that God himself in the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life that you may have eternal life. Precious is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20:28 20, proclaims that that blood is God's blood that was shed upon Calvary. The gospel is that Christ died. Christ was buried according to the scriptures. And Jesus Christ arose again the third day according to the scriptures where the Bible says it's the blessed hope. There is hope in death. We are all going to die. And the reason why you're going to die, the Bible proclaims, it's not cancer. It's not being hit by a car. It's not an untimely death that will kill you. The Bible proclaims that the wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. And we're here to proclaim through the Bible that you, if you die in your sins, without the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will open your eyes into eternity where the Bible proclaims that there is life after death. Dying in your sins will result of you entering into a place called hell. And God is not willing that any should perish. For God has provided us with a mediator between God and man, that man, the Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation. There is salvation in no other. There is no, no, no name given amongst men whereby you must believe. Whereas Jesus told us in the Gospel of John, ye must be born again. And yet God gives you a free will but tells you that with that free will you must do something. It is something that's not to be overlooked. It is something that you should consider that the day of judgment is coming. And the Bible proclaims, prepare to meet thy God. And you better meet God upon His terms and not your own. For Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father, which is God, but by me. Now notice, when he says coming to the Father is met by Jesus Christ and not your religion. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Roman Catholics in heaven. There are born-again, Bible-believing Christians. And just don't think because you add the name Christian to your life that you are approved of God. Christian is someone who lives the life of the Lord Jesus Christ set by God. It's just not a title handed out like free candy. A Christian is one that is born again, that is saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do to be saved? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's not to believe in Mary. It's not to believe in the Pope. It is not to believe in sacraments to be a Christian. A Christian is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that alone. Not of works, least any man should boast. Salvation is set forth to you by God because you have been handed a death decree. You are going to die.
Union, you don't even have the insurance of death because a rapture may happen any time. But for you who disbelieve, for you who rebel against God, death is sure. And death may be today. Today may be the last day you take your last breath upon this planet and you will be judged by what you have done with the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry to proclaim to you today that you cannot tell God I never knew. You cannot have any alibi to God the Father, to God the Judge today, because you heard, have heard that Jesus says that you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. According to Acts 16.31, you are without excuse. I know you can hear my big mouth across this compound. Huh? What? I know that you know the way of salvation. I can't. Because I have told you, you will only make me much louder. I have told you through the Bible that Jesus says you must be born again. You must believe on God as your Savior, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The blessed hope. The blessed hope lies in, not in alcohol. The blessed hope relies not in pills. The blessed hope relies not in the government. The blessed hope relies in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Love is a principle that is found upon God. There is no love without God. First John says that God is love, and we all know that verse. For God so loved. Isaiah 1 says, My Lord, God is willing, God is able, let me read to you out Isaiah chapter 1. Excuse my friend here. Didn't we prophesy and cast out demons in your name? What shall we say? Depart from oh, God. No, God is crying out. God knows invitation to my God to you to come now, presently, right now, not tomorrow, not next week, not when I'm thirty, not when I'm over the hill, but come now. Who do you say I am? Come now, God says. Let us. God says, come right now. God says, let you and him come together. God is reaching out to you today to sit in his heavenly presence to know about his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. God is telling you by people like us through the scriptures, go ye and all to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is coming out to you to come to him. And with that, God has provided you with an invitation. He says, come now, let us reason together. God is not a harsh God. God is reasonable according to the scriptures. God wants to hear from you, but God wants you to hear the truth. God wants you to hear from His Word. He does not want you to believe in a cult. He does not want you to believe in a religion. He wants you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And He says, come out. We're not going to go in the world to you. You've got to come out of the world to meet God. You've got to stick. You've got to take that step forward out to God, and we will open up a Bible. We will give you a gospel tract free of charge for you to know the way that God has set for you, has determined for you to do, even though.
know you have a free will to believe or to reject. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. I didn't say that. I'm just reading to you. God is reaching out to you sinners, knowing that you're going to die. And knowing that if you die in your sins, that you will result into a devil's hell, which he does not want you to go. He's not willing that any should perish. The fact is that he does not want you to go to hell. He says, come now, let us get together. Let's reason together and let's talk about my son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is God's invitation. That is God's offering to you. He's not inviting you to go to church. He's inviting you to the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll take care of church later. But the invitation is for you to come to Christ and know the way of salvation, to know the truth, and to know the life set forth by the Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, Many will go the broad way, as you are all doing right now. Many will go into the gates of hell and never to come out again. Few will go through the straight gate. And the straight gate is over here with the Bible. The straight gate is one, maybe two that will come out of the broad way and to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and to believe on Him as their Savior and be born again to be saved. The Bible proclaims, bring your children to the Lord Jesus Christ in the saving grace. Suffer the little children not to come on, suffer the little children to come unto me, saith the Lord. It is your responsibility, parents, to bring Jesus Christ to your children and bring your children to Jesus Christ. You'd be a fool to turn your children away from Jesus Christ and into this world. This world has nothing to offer but death. But Jesus Christ offers life. Though your sins be as scarlet, bright red, you have a sin condition. No matter if you're male, female, young, old, white, black, brown, yellow, green, whoever, whatever you are, whosoever, you've got a sin condition. And if you die in your sins, your condition will put you into hell. Plain and simple. Selling magazines. Burning candles, praying for the dead is not acceptable to God, but an abomination before God. Because it's an abomination because you have not believed on Jesus Christ as your Savior, but rather putting your trust in a candle, into works, into anything but what God has prescribed. As Jesus said, I am the way, not candles, not the Pope, not religions, not being a good person. I
cannot be saved by doctors. It cannot be saved by lawyers. It cannot be saved by a football team. It cannot be saved by money. It can only be saved by the precious blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord. We stand here as a family believe and sought upon God's mercy and grace and the blood atonement set by Calvary and the empty grave that we are born again Bible believing Christians washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and that is our hope. That is our glory. That is our life. That is the truth and it's the way that we stand and proclaim to you to come out and join us and be born again Bible believing Christians. Right now, let me know what a Christian would happen if I were to die right now, if I would be hit by a Florida driver, if I would be killed by a Muslim, if I'd be tortured by a Catholic. Let me know if I were to die right now, I'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And the Bible says these things are written that you may know you have eternal life. The Bible, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, gives you a of where you're going to go when you take your last breath. Do you have that insurance? Does religion provide that assurance for you? I tell you, if you say yes, you are a liar as Satan is, because religion does not give you no assurance of salvation. Assurance of salvation is in the word through the Lord Jesus Christ that died for your sins, that was buried, and arose again from the grave, that you may have eternal life. For God knows your condition. God knows where you're going to go. And God has set forth a way that you may believe and have life set eternally by His Son to be forever with the God that created you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That life is sought not by booze. That life is sought not by drugs. It's not sought by Obamacare. It is sought by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and become saved, you will enter into a life eternal of no pain, no hardship, no more tears, of eternal life set forth by the God that created you, of no misery, of no torture, of no more suffering in New Jerusalem by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. See, the world's got to give you health care because the world is full of pain. The world is filled of sorrow. There is misery in this world. Why would you put your faith, why would you put your trust in a God-forsaken world of sin and misery and comfort as long as you have a dollar? You ain't got no dollar. You ain't getting no comfort. These people that stand around the corner from me right now that left because the police have shown up are people that are homeless. Let me tell you in eternity, without the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be homeless. You'll be homeless in a place called hell, without gates, without cities, without a mansion that God offers to you by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. In hell you'll have no home. In hell you'll have no name. In hell you'll have no identity, but you will have pain, torture, torments for all eternity because you today have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and die in your sins. There is something coming to the end of your life. The 
Though they may bury you in a graveyard, there is something more to life. It's called eternal life. And in eternal life, there is heaven or there's hell, there's nothing in between. Heaven is sought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried according to scriptures, and arose again the third day. If what you're believing on to get to heaven is still in the grave, you won't be in the grave. You'll die with that whoever you believe that's still buried, that is still dead, because life is sought by the one that's seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Salvation is by, he's not here, he is risen. That is the salvation. Mary's still in the grave. Peter is still in the grave. Joe Smith is still in the grave. And no matter how many magazines you peddle on a Saturday afternoon, that is still the works of the flesh and it cannot save you. washed in the Lamb. Be ye washed in the beloved Lamb. And that Lamb which is God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the blessed Son, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, a Lamb without spot. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That is the only ticket. That is the only acceptance God will take from you when you get to heaven. You will not find Peter. Peter will not be at the pearly gates to take your request. You will find the Lord Jesus Christ seated upon a throne. And if you find the Lord Jesus Christ upon the throne at the great white throne judgment being in the church age today, you will be condemned to the lake of fire for all eternity. As a person that's living in the church age, you make the great white throne judgment and see the Lord Jesus Christ, you are condemned by not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is wrought by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God knows your condition. God knows where you're going even though you don't want to believe it. God knows your destination even though you choose to reject. In your ignorance, God knows. And God has set out a way for you that has been done by God which cannot be done by you. God has already made the step for you. And that step is in the virgin birth, in the life, in the death, in the burial, in the resurrection, and in the Lord Jesus Christ that is seated at the right hand of the Father at this moment right now. That is life. That is God approved. And we're standing here to call upon you to come out, to step out, to come forth, and to put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that you may be saved. It is something not to be taken too lightly. It is something that, you know, you just can't pass off. There will be a day if you continue to reject the Lord Jesus Christ as you that you wish you would have believed these words. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as, as your Savior, there will come a day that in glory before the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to wrap your arms around my family and thank us for being here and your family, and your friends that choose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There can be a day that you are thankful that we stand here with the Bible, with the truth, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Or there could be a day that you're going to stand and say, Oh, I wish I listened. I am thankful.
thankful that that guy showed up. I am not thankful that I chose to reject his words. See, once you die, the choice that you have made cannot be rechosen. Once you die, you cannot press the button and redo. You don't get five more lives. You're not a cat. When you die, you die. If you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity. And if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, your eternity will be changed. Your your eternity will be blessed. Your eternity will be with the one that died for you. But it's based upon what you choose right now because you may not have this afternoon. What is your life, the Bible says? It's a vapor. Many people did not wake up this morning with plenty of plans to do today. There are people who woke up, who did not wake up this morning, who wants to go to the Super Bowl tomorrow, and they're not going. They entered off into an eternal place, and they'll never get out. Some to damnation, and some to glorification. Glorification by Jesus Christ, damnation by rejecting Jesus Christ. The gospel set out for you that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You don't need to do anything. There is absolutely nothing for you to do to be saved. It has been wrought by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, nothing you can do. And if you can do it, why did he go to the cross? Why did he die? Your eternal life is rest upon what Jesus Christ has done. Your diagnosis of being terminal has been wrought in the blood and the testimony of Jesus Christ died upon Calvary's cross and shed His holy blood for your sins. And they buried Him. They took the body of the Lord Jesus Christ off the cross and put Him in a tomb according to the Scriptures. You can put my body in, in a tomb in a grave, and that's not according to Scriptures. If they had dropped a nuclear bomb on me right now, you ain't going to have nothing to bury in the ground. If the Muslims have their way, there'll be nothing left to bury in the ground. If the Catholics get their way, there'll be nothing. They'll throw me in the river. Drag me through the river. Fox's Book of Martyrs. But Jesus Christ died upon that cross, and the Scripture said that they were going to bury him in a tomb. And the Bible says it's going to be a bar it's going to be a tomb that was not his. It was borrowed. You know why that tomb was buried and borrowed? Because he's not going to be there. It's not going to be his life residency. He's going to come out of that tomb as the angels proclaim. He's not here. He is risen. The gospel, the third part. He was raised from the dead according to the scripture. Now let's go visit the graveyards of your religion. Let's go to Joe Smith and dig him up. If you can find his body, he's not a savior. Any and one of any of the popes, if you can find their body, they're not a savior. Bodies like Joseph Stalin are lying in state. He's not a savior. Elvis, Michael Jackson's bodies are still there. They're not saviors. But the one tomb that is empty, that has a sign that says he is not here, he is, he is risen, the Lord Jesus Christ has victory over death. He has victory over the sting of death. And it's rise in the gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried, and arose again the third day. That is salvation. 
and there is no other. There is nothing other. God has set out in Mark 16, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. Again, the gospel is that Christ died for your sins, he was buried, and he rose again. No cash, no check, no money order, no credit. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin.